Hey everyone. Welcome to the psychology lecture series. In the following videos, we are going to talk about methods of research. In this video, we are going to talk about observation method of research. Observation method consists of collecting facts which are in the direct knowledge of the investigator. Observation is the perception with a purpose and it can be also called as regulated perception. Pauline Young has described it as deliberate study through the eyes. Observation is generally watching what people do. Some of the major types of observation are controlled observations, naturalistic observations and participant observations. The main advantage of this method of research is that it is cheap to carry out and however they can be very time consuming. Controlled observations or structured observations are usually carried out in a psychology laboratory. The researcher decides where the observation will take place at what time and with which participants in what circumstances and uses a standardized procedure. In spite of writing a detailed description of all behavior observed, researchers often use code behavior. Coding might involve numbers or letters to describe a characteristics or use of a scale to measure behavior intensity. It is coded so that the collected data can be easily counted and turned into statistics. For example, the famous psychologist Mary Ainsworth used a behavior schedule to study how infants responded to brief periods of separation from their mothers. The infants' interaction behaviors directed toward the mother were measured in the categories of proximity and contact seeking, contact maintaining, avoidance of proximity and contact, resistance to contact and comforting and searching. The observer noted down the behavior displayed during 15 seconds interval and scored the behavior for intensity on a scale of 1 to 7. Sometimes the behavior is observed through a two-way mirror or they are secretly observed. This method was used by Albert Bandura, aggression in children in the Bobo doll studies. A lot of research has been carried out in sleep laboratories as well. Here, electrodes are attached to the scalp of participants and the changes in the electrical activity in the brain during sleep is observed. The mission is called an electroencephalogram. An EEG. Controlled observations are usually overt as the researchers explain the research aim to the group so the participants know that they are being observed. Controlled observations can be easily replicated by other researchers by using the same observation schedule. The data obtained from structured observations is easier and quicker to analyze as it is numerical, making it a less time-consuming method compared to naturalistic observations. Controlled observations are quick to conduct. Controlled observations can lack validity due to Hawthorne effect. When participants know they are being watched, they may act differently. Naturalistic observation technique involves observing subjects in their natural environment. This type of research is often utilized in situations where conducting lab research is unrealistic, cost prohibitive or would affect the subject's behavior. For example, researchers interested in looking at certain aspects of classroom behavior such as interactions between students or 
between the teacher and students might opt out to use naturalistic observation as part of their research. One of the biggest advantages of this type of research is that it allows the investigators to directly observe the subject in a natural setting. It allows the researchers to study things that cannot be manipulated in a lab due to ethical concerns. For example, it would be unethical to study the effects of imprisonment. It can help support the external validity of the research. Some of the disadvantages of the naturalistic observation includes the fact that it can be difficult to determine the exact cause of a behavior and the experimenter cannot control outside variables. Different observers may draw different conclusions from the same witnessed behavior. Two researchers might see the same actions yet define them as different. People may try to behave in a certain way in order to confirm what they think the researchers expect to see. In psychology, the term demand characteristics refer to subtle cues that let participants know what the experiment is about or what the researchers hope to find. As a result of this demand characteristics, participants may alter their behavior in order to go along with what they think the researchers want. Participant observations can be either covert or overt. Covert is where the study is carried out undercover. On the other hand, overt is where the researchers reveal his or her true identity and purpose to the group and asks permission to observe. If it were research on animals, we would now not only be studying them in their natural habitat, but we will also be living alongside them. This approach was used by Leon Festinger in a famous study into a religious cult who believed that the end of the world was about to occur. He joined the cult and studied how they reacted when the prophecy did not come true. I hope you like this video. Please share these videos with everyone who is preparing for this exam. Thank you.